So you see people using the Whirlwind Barb. Maybe you see people using the Pit Zerker or they use Berserk out on Pendle. Yeah, it works pretty dang good, but you want to try something a little bit different. Maybe you want to zip and run around super quick. And that's why today I'm bringing you a build guide and showcase for the Frenzy Barbarian. Now, there will obviously be several different choices in different slots. And for the weapons, feel free when I get to that point, go down in the comments. Let me know what your preferred option is. So right now, first of all, for this Barbarian right here, we're going to jump into the stats page. Pretty basic for most builds. We've got max vitality. So we got just enough strength to wear our gear. And then actually our gear bumps it up even higher. We've got dexterity, just enough to wear our gear. And we've got everything else dumped into vitality. Get our life up pretty good. And after your battle orders, you can see over here, right now we only have 2,000. This will be up to like 5K, which is perfectly acceptable. It works really dang good for running around slapping down monsters here in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Resistance is not quite capped. You can definitely do a few different swaps, a little jumping around with the gear and things like that in order to cap these out if you would want to. But for anything that I do with it, this works perfectly fine, works really well. Alrighty, now we're into the skill tree here and you see uh, we went ahead and came down to Frenzy, obviously capped that out with 20 skill points. And the top synergy there is Double Swing. So we went ahead and capped out Double Swing for 20 points as well, hard points, 8% damage per level. Now the Taunt also gives 8% damage per level. So eventually we do get around to maxing that out. But I do want to mention down at the bottom, the increased stamina and the Berserk. I don't cap those out. I don't feel like those are beneficial enough to use a ton of points into that. Now you could, if you wanted to, in order to deal with physical immunes, you could go one point down the middle and just get one point into Berserk just to have something to deal with physical immunes if you come across them and you want to take them out. I just went ahead and said, forget it. And I deal with it just a slightly different way. There's a couple different things you could do, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Jumping over to Combat Mastery, as you can see, we're using two Crystal Swords right here. So we've got Blade Mastery. Well, not technically Crystal Swords, but you'll see what I mean in a second. So we maxed out Blade Mastery to bump that up and then hit each of the one point wonders. We've got increased stamina, iron skin, increased speed, and natural resistance. Like I said, if you wanted to get your resistances capped, you could pump a few points into this, lose some power in it or survivability somewhere else, but that's just up to you. It's not the way I would necessarily recommend to go, but I wouldn't blame you, I suppose. Now, over on the War Cries. Now, remember Taunt is a synergy for Frenzy. So we come down to Taunt and we go ahead and actually not quite cap that out for me. You could get the extra points into capping that out first, but I actually want to get my find item skill kind of as high as possible. And after you use battle orders, we can get this up to 69% chance, which is an amazing percent chance to get. So we've got, actually I got four hard points here and we went ahead and capped out find potion. Now, if you want to take a couple points from here, Put them over in a taunt, completely understand. This is just the way I decide to balance the skill points around. But each to each of their own, you really wouldn't feel a huge difference either way, I'm going to be perfectly honest. So also coming down the middle here, you want to get at least one point into battle orders and at least one point into battle command. Also, if you want to get more life, you could be putting more points here as well. But this is obviously the way I would recommend kind of doing it. Uh, that's why I did it this way. So battle orders giving you more life, battle command increasing your skill levels. That's another reason why I said this find item will get up to percent chance of 69%. Now the part everybody loves, we're taking a look at the gear on this particular Barbarian. And for kind of ease sake, I went ahead and went with dual griefs right here. Can't go wrong with two grief swords. So a ton of damage coming out of those. Uh, of course, when you're going against normal monsters as well, you got to ignore target defense. They automatically have prevent monster heal on them. There's a ton of different things on these. Um, of course, you could throw on a last wish up here as well. Uh, that will also be a great option. You could do, usually you want to have at least one grief but you could have a grief death. You could have a grief breath of the grief breath of the dying. And like I said, last wish, or if you want to go with more budget stuff, if you can't afford to get these, a lightsaber up here and uh, maybe an unbending will, a couple other options like that. So on the swords is where there's going to be the most options, depending on what your budget is, what you can get, but you can't go wrong with dual griefs. They really do uh, a ton of damage. Jumping up in the helmet. Now you absolutely pretty much have to have cannot be frozen on a barbarian, but you generally don't want to throw on a Raven Frost because you're going to be making everything you attack cold, then a lot of it will shatter. You won't be able to use find item. So if you can get yourself a Chamrune, throw the Chamrune in your areas, or maybe if you want to go with a magic find variant of this particular character, go ahead and throw a Chamrune into your uh, Shaco. There you go. A uh, few other options are up here, but really those two Shaco and Ariats are going to be the best options. Over here, High Lord's Wrath. 
pretty much the go-to for melee characters, and this one is no exception. All skills increase attack speed, but really it's that deadly strike based on character level. Also, it does bump up your lightning res as well. So that is an absolutely amazing option over here on the amulet. Now, strangely enough, I actually have Enigma here, but I don't teleport with this character a ton. I do utilize it. We'll say going out to places, let's say I'm farming the pits or wherever I'm going. But really, after you start attacking, you go ahead and just run around. So actually, I use it for the 45% increased run walk speed, but it does have a lot of other good things as well. As you know, all that strength based on character level, increased life, physical damage reduction, life after killing, uh, 100 magic find. It's magic find based on character level. This is a 99 character. Here we have laying of hands, 350% damage to demons along with increased attack speed. That is a huge amount of, of uh, enhanced damage to demons and like, I don't know what, 60%, maybe 50% of all the monsters in the game are demons. So it's going to help out your kill speed on a lot of those. And usually the demons are the ones that have like the higher health pools and not to mention all the act bosses and stuff. So absolutely amazing option there for melee characters. On the rings, I got one BK ring. There's going to be many different options over here as well, but we got a BK ring with life, life leech, and a skill. And then I got a little, just a little baby dual leech ring over here. Uh, you could definitely find some other stuff if you wanted to get more attack rating. Let's say you were missing and you didn't have ignore target defense, or you're going after Ubers or something where ignore target defense does not work. You could go dual angelics right here. So the angelic ami and the angelic ring, that is an option. So a lot of different options, especially as far as it comes to rare rings. Uh, generally, though, like I said, don't throw a Raven Frost on here unless you don't care about all the monsters shattering and not being able to use find item on them. Here on the belt, kind of a kind of a weaker slot, to be perfectly honest. There's not a ton of great options, but here I went ahead, went with the String of Ears. If you would like to get your Cannot Be Frozen right here, you could throw on a Trang's belt. It does have Cannot Be Frozen right there. I wouldn't blame you at all for that if you can't get your hands on a Chamrune up at the top here but string of ears is kind of a go-to its budget is cheap it's easy to find and it actually is reasonably well with that damage reduced and the life leech on it over on the boots we've got gore riders great option crushing bro deadly strike open wounds don't worry i barely mispronounced that also that's the walk run also an, obviously another great option especially if you're going ubers or something go ahead and throw on some goblin toes 25 percent crushing blow on those boots but Gore Riders are an absolute clutch, absolute classic to throw it on there. On swap here, personally, I have these dual Heart of the Oaks. If you can't afford Heart of the Oaks over here, because this is what, let's say, you're teleporting around. Let's say you're using Find Item and you want to use Find Item faster. You know, the faster you hork, the more bodies you can, you know, get a chance to get an item. You could throw on something over here for Magic Find while you're, you know, two Alibabas, six Sisted Crystal Swords, whatever you want to throw over here. But I have these for the cast rate over here while you're teleporting around like i said horking and on top of that when you're using battle orders they got three all skills on them but really it's kind of mainly for the teleporting around faster if you want to throw with spikes over here it's for teleporting faster suicide branches a uh, couple options along those lines or like i said uh, magic find type of items so i realized you just seen a bunch of grand charms down here after getting into the build guide here i realized i had the wrong charm so i swapped in with more examples of what you would really want to have here so the thing is, the skillers don't really help out this build as much. So you want to go with more things. Generally, people will go with more max damage and attack rating. And obviously, life and stuff will help you out too. But max damage and attack rating, they don't have to be small charms like these are. They could even be grand charms can be really good or even better than small charms. And even large charms can be very good as well. So look at getting max damage and attack rating on those. Of course, life is going to help out your survivability, so getting life in down here too. Or you can make up your resistances down here along with getting more magic find. So whatever you feel like you need, want, or is necessary down here, you can get all res, seven magic find, small charms, or any different variations of max damage and attack rating. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the mercenary. And once again, there is a few different options. Here I went with might mercenary to get more damage. So this is act two might mercenary. If you didn't have the ignore target defense or whatever, you could go with blessed aim, I suppose. I wouldn't recommend going with the cold one for the reason is everything will shatter once again. Now, for the weapon, there was kind of a tug of war in my mind, I guess you could say. I ended up going with Reaper's Toll to go ahead and take care of the physical immunes. It is also a great option for survivability and putting out just general damage on your mercenary. It does have that cold damage on it, which could be pesky, but really, I kill almost everything in the entire game. So I decided to go with that. I did initially have actually an infinity on there 
because uh, then you actually get that conviction aura actually does limit the defense of the monsters, allowing them to be hit more often. So if you didn't have ignore target defense, something like that. And also just strictly because infinity does do a bunch of damage and uh, it does also have no cold damage on it. But there's many different options on the Act 2 Mercenary. Most people know what those all are. As for the armor and stuff here, we got Andaro's Visage right here. And we have a Fortitude, pretty classic Act 2 Mercenary. Kind of melee character setup uh, right there. Alrighty, now you see how it's put together? How does it actually work? How good is it? Let's see this puppy in action. Now, here we are at the pits. I will note, if you teleport around with this sucker the way it's built, you do run out of mana mega, mega quick. So generally, when you hop down and farm in the areas, you're going to want to run around for the most part. But if you didn't know, when you get wound up, is what I call it anyways, on the frenzy bar, you go ahead and sprint around crazy fast. And this is jumping in here right off the bat. We're players three difficulty. So there you go. Slap them down and then go ahead and use the find item. I already use battle orders and battle commands to boost my life up. The life isn't quite as high as I remember, but you'll be perfectly fine anyways with this amount of life uh, with the life leech that you do have on this character. And there you go, leech and life back. You get wound up, you sprint along. And the way this build is, it's actually so crazy. You could actually farm with this character essentially without looking at the screen. You can close your eyes, hold down the button, and it just goes and goes and goes. So that's literally how it goes. You can just sit back and... And not even on the mouse, I'm just holding down the attack button and sprinting around and it just kind of automatically targets the next monster that's kind of in the area. So it's kind of one of those type of builds. Knock them all dead. Go ahead and use find item as fast as you can with the find item skill here with your dual part of the oaks out. So you, you pretty much see how the pits work here. Let's go ahead and jump to a few other areas where this works out. And I'm going to show you how this works on D-Clone as well at the end. Oh, fellas, Ogre Mall of Quickness. Why couldn't it have the Cruels mod on it too? Now the pits, good 85 area. Uh, yeah, the Chaos Sanctuary, another good area of farm, no doubt. So here we are, and once again, this is a Player's 3 Chaos Sanctuary. And yeah, guys, no, it's not the next hammer in, but man, it, it's working pretty darn good. You're talking a melee character flying through a high level area that's great for finding high runes, high, or fi for finding elite bases, for finding good uniques. You can knock them all down, use find item if you want to on every monster, or you can just hit the champions all up to you. Or don't find item on any of those monsters. Just go ahead and keep zipping through as fast as you can. It's all up to how you want to play. Maybe generally I would probably try to hit packs where you did have a champion right there. Trying to get those Griffin's eyes and, you know, death webs and things along those lines. So here's a couple of them champions. Chop, chop, chop. And it does kind of target all the different monsters in the group in the pack. So uh, it kind of almost has an area of effect, but not really. It doesn't chop down the one monster mega fast, but hits all the group. And as you can see, as I'm attacking, none of them are getting chilled out, so none of their corpses are freezing. So you could go ahead and use Find Item on literally every single one of them. You get this character built up just a little bit. It's pretty fun. It's a little little bit off the beaten path. Uh, it's really one that you can enjoy. Maybe a little off meta, but yeah, super fun. And now we'll go ahead and hit probably the most common place to farm with any Barbarian, and that is Trav. Now, a lot of times you can have problems with the Hydras and, you know, different things like that. And you can see uh, my health, it's not even budging. You might have to watch your mercenary slightly. You say this is player's three trap, probably the most efficient uh, player's count in order to farm trap. But you see, it really takes not much time at all with this build. They are all demons, so that 350 damage to demons from the laying of hands really wrecking them. And bam, trap is gone that fast. Then you go ahead and hit him with the find item. If you were running out of trap like this, and you, this is what you were hammering over and over and over again. You could set the build up slightly different. I'm actually completely full of gold already. But man, yeah, this build works very well out here at Trav. Alrighty, now how does this work against D-Clone? Goodbye, SOJ. Diablo has invaded Sanctuary. And we're out the Arcane Sanctuary for my favorite and go-to spot. To go after D-Clone, that's out here at Fire Eyes. And here we go, swing, swing, swing away. And remember, I didn't even go and get optimal gear for this particular setup. All I did was come out here with the exact same stuff I had before. You could definitely make this way better, stacking more crushing blow, stacking more attack rating, and really even put in effort. But I mean, why? It would take me like 25 minutes to go track down all that different gear to really get this character better. Instead, I could just kill him in like a minute or a minute and a half instead of spending 20 or 25 minutes getting better gear. You can take a look at my life over there. 
not really uh, any struggle here, am I right, fellas? You stand here, holding down the button, just kind of waiting for them to get chopped down. So even on these harder monsters like this, you're going to be okay. Obviously, if you're going after torches, which I used a Frenzy Barb several times for farming torches, you're going to have to get some life tap to do that. You're going to need some lightning absorb for going after Uber Mephisto. But for just here, just for taking out our boy uh, D-Clone, not much of a struggle at all. And by not much of a struggle, I mean no struggle at all. Just for S's and G's, what's our Annie get? We've got 14, 15, 9. We'll go ahead and hang on to our 20, 20, 10. But now that's the Frenzy Barb. Go ahead down in the comments and let me know anything you like to do different or different gear options you love to rock on this Frenzy Barb. Don't forget the like button and subscribe up if you're new to the channel or you just kind of forget to because a lot of people just don't realize they're not subscribed. And a mega huge shout out to everybody who supports the channel, whether you're talking super chats while I'm live streaming or Twitch bits or you're subscribed over on Twitch, YouTube channel members, all the people that support the channel really do make it possible for me to keep making videos just like this one and streaming here on YouTube and Twitch. And also big shout out to the ones that support me over on Patreon. Peace out, fellas, and keep slaying.